You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. Everything you want to know about their Monty shit show home. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Now, first of all, this is not a hello piece taking you through the various rooms in the Monty Shit Show mansion, including the 47,000 flushing toilets. No, not at all. Instead, there's been some sleuthing done. This has been posted on a thread in the Reddit, uh, the subreddit, St. Harry's Wife, although they use her full name, and has been placed there by some speculation. And it's an interesting in-depth analysis of the property, which is worth me making a video about it to help you understand more about the mindset of Harry's wife and also Harry vis-a-vis -vis the property that they live in. The purpose of this is to look at the financial details, the real estate prices and the home's history. Their home which has been labelled as the Olive Garden Purgatory for Displaced Overseas Royals, was purchased for $14.65 million in an off-market sale in June 2020 and was mortgaged. This was confirmed by the LA Times. The property has a rather unsettling history. Apparently, a mentally ill man was confined there for decades, and oddly enough, that... It comes from an article from Hello! magazine, just to give you a flavour for that, and this was published back in 2020. The estate had an eerie past because it was once the home of schizophrenic Stanley McCormick, the subject of T.C. Boyle's 1998 novel Riven Rock, and it was where he was confined for four decades. Stanley developed severe mental problems and was locked in his home on the Riven Rock estate, while medical experts attempted to cure him. His family went on to hire a private scientist and allowed him to set up a laboratory inside of the home in a bid to heal Stanley. To no avail, Stanley's wife's Catherine took matters into her own hands and began to transform their property into what she believed would make for a healing sanctuary, including tropical plants imported from Japan and a six-acre lemon orchard. The family also installed a nine-hole golf course and a theatre for live performances that meant Stanley had his own home entertainment without a need to leave. Stanley died from pneumonia in 1947 and Catherine passed away 20 years later in 1967. The Riven Rock estate was eventually split into pockets of land and sold as grounds for separate homes, including Harry's wife's new property. So a little bit of the past from the property, but more is that its formal name is Chateau of Riven Rock, and apparently the address is 765 Rockbridge Road. It was value in August 2021, a year later was still viewed as $14.65 million, but interestingly, a sale was sought in 2015, where it was put on the market for $49.4 million, three times more than for which it was purchased by Harry's wife. This did not tempt anybody to purchase it, and therefore it was reduced to $35 million and was promoted in the LA Times in 2015 for $35 million. It was then reduced again, for 20, down to $22.9 million. And by October 2020, it was being listed on Gigster for rentals at $700 per hour. It was then purchased from Russian oligarch Sergei Grishin, who clearly took a multi-million dollar loss in selling the property. It appears to be owned by Rockbridge LLC under Grishin. Rockbridge LLC also took out two federal COVID loans for under $50,000 in 2021 that appear to have been paid off in full. The address for Rockbridge LLC is the same as the Wells Fargo in Monte Show, and therefore could just be a box there. Grishin has since died. Then, in terms of who actually owns it, well, it would appear that it has been purchased by Harry 
and Harry's wife. And it was purchased via a real residential estate trust, the address of which is identical to Harry's wife's business manager at the time in Beverly Hills. And there is further information about its ownership. Sergei Grishin purchased it 21st of May 2009 for $25 million and then sold it 11 years later on June the 9th, June the 9th for $14.65 million. So suffered a loss of over $10 million on the transaction. The buyer was Real Residential Estate Trust and the mailing address of which was 8383 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1000, Beverly Hills, California 90211. The address corresponds exactly with that of the office of Harry's wife's business manager, Andrew K. Mayer of Freemark Financial. Interestingly, the registered address of MM Global LLC, which is a now defunct entity, was also 8383 Wilshire Boulevard. The directors included Andrew K. Mayer and someone called Harry's wife. Harry and Harry's wife do indeed own the Monte Shitcho Olive Garden, as the Redditors refer to it. The suggestion is that the mortgage is around about $9 million and some unearthing which had been undertaken by Build the Herd on Reddit, determined by obtaining the deed of trust for the property from the Santa Barbara County Clerk's office, that the mortgage is $9,522,500 and that it's a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and the interest rate is 2.49%. And the lender is City National. Build the Herd put that through a monthly mortgage payment collector and determined that the monthly mortgage payment is $37,575 a month. So pretty chunky. And therefore, understandably, why Harry's wife needs to ensure that she merches as much as she possibly can to make sure that that's paid for. There's also been, as unearthed from previous articles, some problems about it. There's a stomach-churning smell from a nearby bird sanctuary. There's questions about not being able to insure it, or the insurance is huge because it's in a mud mudslide zone. And purportedly, they said they weren't over, moon, over the moon about the property, and they were eager to sell and move elsewhere. Even in August 2022, the ever-sympathetic Marie Claire magazine stated that they are eager to sell and move. The article at the time read more like a PR real estate advertisement for the home. In terms of taxation, the tax assessment for 2021-2022 is $141,000, taxed at a rate of 1.04%, which appears to be more of a business tax rate. The current value of the home was assessed at just under $13.3 million, so less than that which they purchased it for. Interestingly, in tax records for their address, it's listed as a Prop 13 Oblique AB8, which is why their initial taxes were so low at 1.04%. This means their property taxes were re-evaluated with the current market value of their property as measured by the sale price for change of ownership. What is interesting about the property, and this is also picked up in this Reddit thread, is that although they tried to make it seem as if the filming was in and around where they lived, that the majority wasn't actually filmed there. It was filmed at 888 Lilac Drive, a property that was listed in December 2022 for $33.5 million. So they filmed it in another Montesicchio home that they passed off as indirectly being theirs. They never clarified it wasn't their home during filming there behind the scenes. Apparently, Harry was paranoid about a security risk, whereas, of course, what Harry's wife is doing is passing off a another property as theirs because the property they live in is rather dated. They filmed the docu-series in a home valued over twice as much as theirs, which, of course, is interesting 
because that's part of a misrepresentation that would take place and hardly a surprise to come from a narcissist to suggest that they're actually this is their home when it wasn't for the purposes of the filming. They also, of course, have undertaken filming elsewhere. They regularly retreat to a room at the San Isidro Ranch and again, rather than have the filming at their somewhat dated property. So the property is owned by them with a Harry's wife created LLC and is mortgaged. They bought it heavily discounted after multiple markdowns and rentals. There are major problems with the property. Now, interestingly, of course, you might wonder why on earth would you buy a property that has problems associated with it? Well, of course, remember, Harry's wife comes from a particular background where she wasn't wealthy. She didn't move in these circles. But her narcissism dictates that she ought to that she believes that this is very much where she belongs. And therefore, seeing a property which is large, with large gardens, her narcissism automatically thought, get it. Why? Because it would accord with the status that she believes that she's entitled to, that is in Monte Shit Show, which, of course, by the standards of other neighbours, their property is a sort of poor person's version But the fact is, she would be in the area believing that she belongs, that these are her people. And therefore, her narcissism caused her to essentially drive home a bum deal. Yes, it was heavily discounted, but it hasn't apparently risen in any value and has the problems associated with it, which I described earlier. Once again, the collateral consequences rise. So even with the purchase of a property, her narcissism is involved in it because her narcissism thought, great, we can triangulate people with this property. Great, we can manage a facade because it's in an area that makes our narcissist look good. But of course, the narcissism linked to her lower cognitive function didn't have any due regard for the fact that she would end up with a property that would not increase in value and have problems associated with it. Of course, those problems won't be her fault. It'll be somebody else's fault. The realtor didn't explain it to us properly. Harry, you were the one that made the decision to live here, which of course he didn't, but her narcissism will revise history. They avoid filming there, which is a form of exaggeration and a lack of accountability. For instance, there's the spare interviews that took place at San Isidro. The Oprah interview was at Oprah's house. And the only times really we've seen anything there was the 40-40 ball juggling with Harry's wife at the bench of her rather beige throne. And consequently, we can learn more about the narcissism of the of Harry's wife and how it impacts upon her behaviour as a consequence of this deep dive that has been undertaken by some speculation on a Reddit thread, by them going through the various documents and articles to piece together the history of their home and the financial surrounding it, It gives us another opportunity to examine the evidence, something I always tell you that's important, and then interpret that evidence through the prism of her narcissism to understand it better. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.